What's up guys? Patrick from WP Builder Helper and today we are going to be talking about a free SEO tool and it's one you probably know about but we're going to do a tutorial on it, go over it, explain what it does, what I would kind of stay away from and what I think about it. So let's get started. All right, guys, so here we are in front of this free SEO tool. If you don't know about it, you probably should know about it because it's very interesting. There's some things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the advantages of using Ubersuggest, the disadvantages, what you need to watch out for, and just in general, how these SEO tools work and things like that. So let's get started. Ubersuggest is a tool that was started by Neil Patel. If you are not familiar with him, he's a pretty gigantic marketer and he's all over the place. He puts out content like a madman on the same uh, line as like Gary V or any of these other people. He's got podcast, he's got, he's just got so much that's going on with him and he just does a lot of things. Well, a couple of years ago, he bought this tool from someone and he did it with the intention of making SEO better. If you go into SEO tools nowadays, you'll find that most are very stagnant with what they do. They haven't done anything different in a long time. And so Uber Suggest was created to kind of bridge that gap and force these companies to start doing some different things. And that's what Neil has done. So Neil, there's, there's no payment with this. This is an absolutely free tool. There's some things I don't like about it, but it's free. So can you really complain about it? I, I don't know. I don't want to say that you can, but there's some things that, like I said, I just don't think are my favorite. So let's take a look. I'm going to take it. I'm going to look up apple pie. This, this is just a, uh, a suggestion that I used. I did it on my written tutorial, so I wanted to do it here just to kind of show you. So the first thing you'll notice is it starts spinning and it's going to ask you to sign in with Google. This is the first thing. The reason why it's asking you this is I'm not stupid. He's, he's getting some data from you just to kind of collect it to make the tool more useful, which I think is awesome. That's cool. I don't have any problems with that. And I really like Neil. I think he's a, I think he's a good guy. There are some people who are who are not happy with him just because he gives everything away for free, but I think he's a good guy. I don't think he means to do harm with this, but I do think to some extent, I think I know what his plan is with this tool, and I'm going to save that for the very end. I don't want to talk about it right now, but needless to say, I'm going to kind of spoil I'm going to kind of spoil it at the end. But with this tool, so I just search Apple Pie. It'll give you a search volume, it'll give you an SEO difficulty, it'll give you a paid difficulty, and it'll give you a cost per click. It also gives you the average backlinks, the domain score, and it gives you kind of this cool little chart that, that gives you an idea of where that volume is trending on mobile and on desktop. And you can see desktop's a little lower, mobile's actually quite a bit higher. Then. At the very bottom here, he's got the number of people that click the results. This is an interesting piece. You don't find many SEO programs that have this kind of data. Even this search age, searcher's age range, I don't know where he's getting this from. I would love to know where he's pulling this from because Google's not going to make that standard. So where is he grabbing this from? I'm, I'm sure it's like an API that he's getting it from, but if Google lets you know how many people didn't click on any results and how many people clicked on results, that would totally change keywords and key phrases altogether, okay? I mean, that would totally change it because if you looked at a keyword and only 30% of the people clicked on it, you would know at that point, wow, this keyword is not worth writing for. And there's a thing called searcher's intent that is all in keyword tools, where what that means is it's their chance, it's the searcher's intention of buying something when they click a link, generally. And I think that this is where he's pulling this from, but I'm not exactly sure. It even tells you kind of paid. Uh, 
So the number of people that click the paid results, which is an interesting factor. I still don't think that this is accurate data, but it gives you an idea, and that's the point. At the very bottom here, we get some more keyword ideas. And as you'll see, uh, we started with apple pie, and then it'll go down and it'll give you some more ideas of you know other things. Now, one of the things that I was complaining about that I see has changed was back in the day, if you just typed in apple pie, it would show everything listed under it. So the volume would be other keywords, but they were other keywords that were much, much lower than your original intended keyword. It appears in this search, he actually has a higher keyword, which is apple pie recipe, which comes in much higher volume, and it's much harder. Well, it's, it's a little bit less hard to rank for. But the point is, it, this I didn't think that it did this. I really thought that every keyword you put in, if it were if you didn't use like a broad keyword, then you would never see the totals for it. So I I don't know. That's interesting. Um, and then we go down. It gives you some content ideas, and these are things that have been shared on the web. It's got the estimated visits. It tells you how many times it's been shared, how many times it's been pinned. Once again, don't know how accurate this is. It seems pretty accurate, but I'm not sure. It's the same way with all of this. So one thing I'm gonna say over and over, and I'm only gonna say it at this very beginning, and then I'm never gonna say it again. All of these SEO tools, accuracy, if you are looking for something that's accurate, you cannot go by this search volume. You just can't. There's no way you can. Because when you type in a search of something like, let's say, Elementor.com, I can almost guarantee you that this is not Elementor's traffic. Elementor's traffic is probably closer to the, probably I'd say hundreds of thousands or millions a month. It's got to be. This traffic is just not realistic. It's just not. And I've looked at it on my own sites and I've compared it and it is not even close. I have a keyword that I rank for and it's a number one keyword and Neil basically says that I get zero because it's a long tail search and because they have no data on it and with that keyword it brings in tons of search results so the fact that people aren't aware I mean you can't you can't this is guesswork I mean this isn't but and even backlinks isn't but this kind of stuff the the organic monthly traffic and the organic keywords it's all guesswork they're pulling it and it's it's not very accurate so you cannot go by this and say okay I mean obviously that's what it is but it's not it's just not accurate so don't don't think that just because you pick this that you, if you hit number one you're gonna get that kind of search volume you're probably gonna get double triple quadruple the search volume and then you're gonna get spikes and lows it'll have valleys and things like that just like this like at the end of the year it spikes during the rest of the year it's basically like null like nothing happens with it so I do think there are some good things in this I think the trends are very good I think the trends are fun to watch because I think you shouldn't look at the numbers but you can kind of look at the trend of things and I think that that's fairly accurate I think that that's that's a really accurate these paid difficulties these are just his own perception of why it's difficult I would love to see how they determine this because they never really explain it, but this difficulty is based on him. It's a very good possibility if you wrote an article, you could rank on this keyword. Would it be difficult? Sure it would, because all of the number one spots, which as we go down, you'll see this is more keywords, all of the number one spots are taken by people like Taste of Home, All Recipes, Pillsbury Food Network. These are all some gigantic, gigantic websites. And so if you started a website today, you would never beat them just because they are gigantic. They're going to win. They have the social shares. They have the domain rating. They have the links. They have the estimated visits. They've got all of that. But this is just going to give you an idea. So in these uh, keyword phrases, you'll also get related phrases that you can use. You'll get questions that you can use. So maybe sometimes somebody can an apple pie filling. I don't know how that's a question. But, you know, does apple pie have to be refrigerated? It brings up some good questions. It's not bad. 
gives you some prepositions, and it gives you some comparisons. So then we go down to content ideas. And in content ideas, you can see these are all things that rank. And once again, if you don't sign into Google, you won't see all of the search results. I would recommend you sign into it. It doesn't hurt anything, but once again, wait until the end, and I'm going to tell you what's going to probably happen with this. So then we go to the traffic analyzer. Traffic analyzer, in this case, is for domain names. So this one's for keywords, like if you're trying to search a certain phrase or a long tail suggestion, that type of thing. And this is for the actual traffic analyzer of a, of a website. So if you're trying to look at a website, maybe assess competition, what are they ranking for, what are you not ranking for, that type of thing. So under here, you'll see that they have the top pages, which we can see the top page of Elementor is, of course, Elementor. Then at the bottom, you've got keywords. And once again, this will give you the keywords of that domain name, which you definitely have to sign into Google to get them all. But it'll give you keywords. And I wouldn't say I've tested this again before, and it's like, eh, it's so-so. It's accurate. I'm not saying it's not accurate. It, it is more accurate than most. But it's not going to give you a great idea of every single keyword that they rank for. So don't just go by this and hope that you can beat somebody just by doing that because it's, it's just not going to happen. And then the next part, let's see if this will actually... Okay, I'll cut that out. Okay, sorry about that. Apparently it froze up a second there because I was clicking too much. This last part is what they would call the site audit. And in the site audit you can see that this is critical errors with Elementor. It gives you warnings, recommendations. Once again, this is what Neil is recommending. So, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. He is very, very, um, he's very, very conscious of what he's doing. So I would say that he has a great amount of respect in the community. So if he's saying that we should do something, then you should probably at least look at it, consider it. But I don't think that you should like, he shouldn't be the holy grail of SEO, and he's not the holy grail of SEO. There's plenty of factors that go into SEO, but I will say this, there's probably no one in the whole entire world that studies SEO other than maybe like Brian, um, wait, what's his name? Brian from Backlinko. There's a couple of other ones that are like SEO gurus that just, they do stupid things with SEO. I think the amount that he spends studying it gives him a lot of data, and that's what he uses to build this kind of stuff. So it, it tells you, you know, pages with low word count, pages with duplicate meta descriptions, pages with duplicate title tags, those type of things, just to kind of give you an idea of what's wrong with your website. And then finally, at the very end, we get backlinks. And so backlinks are the links that the site are linking to. And as you can see, there's some government agencies that link to it, some EDUs that link to it. They've got some no follows and they've got a domain score of about 90%, which is very, very good. And you can see they've lost some backlinks, they've gained some. So it's, a, it's just kind of like this back and forth, losing, gaining, losing, gaining. And that's exactly what happens with most domains. So, like I said before, why am I worried about this? So besides the fact that the data is, it's so-so. The data is here, but it's, it's really not correct. The, um, the biggest problem with, that I see for this is when Neil first came out with this, he said, this will be a free tool. I'm not going to ever make it paid. Well, now it's kind of looking more like this is going to be a paid tool at some point. It might be free to a certain extent, but he started putting some restrictions on that. So if you even log into this, you'll get a keyword suggestion and idea. Like if you actually log into the site, it'll let you track 25 keywords per domain name and see where they rank on Google for free. That's pretty cool. That's a neat little feature that'll let you track your post and kind of keep, you know, keyword trackers are one of the more expensive things to buy when it comes to SEO. So it's a neat to have if you're wondering. The biggest problem is that, like I said, he's gonna have to pay for this somehow. So either that's gonna involve one or two things. Either he's gonna put ads or sponsorships on here, or he's gonna take and he's gonna make it paid, or it's gonna be a membership, 
or something along those lines. It's going to change eventually because this was never part of it. And then he all of a sudden included that with the free uh, free trackers. And I just see it becoming more and more marketed so that he can take and make money off of it, which there's nothing wrong with that. He needs to be able to make money. I mean, he's given this tool away for free and probably I would say thousands if not millions of people probably use it to take and go on it and look and see what it is. Now I know some people do not like it. Some people would rather use paid tools. I get it. There are tools out there, Longtail Pro, there's other tools out there that are people just really, really love. And I can understand why. Some of those tools are probably a smidge more accurate because they're paid tools. They have to be a little bit more accurate. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't be shocked if this website is pretty close to those results because I think it is. The paid tools aren't always right either. So you can't just go by what someone gives you and say, oh, I have a paid tool. The only tool that would ever come out that would be an SEO tool that would be ever worth buying without a doubt with knowing that it's 100% accurate is if Google came out with their own SEO tool. That's the only way, and that is because it would be backed by Google's data. And so you just got to take this stuff with a grain of salt. I hope you guys have liked this tutorial. If you didn't know about this, I'm happy that I could show it to you. Down below, tell me which SEO tools are you using? I'd love to know about other SEO tools. Maybe I could try them, see what's going on with them, compare them to this. And hopefully we can get some more tutorials and stuff like that for you guys so that in case you don't know about this stuff, we can move forward with that showing you how it works so you could start using it on your websites. All right? Like and subscribe this video down below. And once again, comment on what is your favorite SEO tool. Thank you guys, and I will see you guys next time.